All right, welcome to your seventh, I think, video. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to create those individual screens. So the first thing that I said to do is we need to make each screen or each state a separate class. So go ahead and click on your package, not that package, this one right here, Java game, right click, new class, and name the first one, which was a first one, menu, M-E-N-U, capital M and make sure that you don't have the main method in this one finish so this is the beginning of our menu class now do the exact same thing but with a play class now so right click package new class and play looking good so now what I want to do is actually start coding the menu class and I'll talk you guys through which each part is so of course our package that's what package we're working with Java game and what we need to do is actually import these two things from game.java copy I could type them in but I'm way too freaking lazy to do that so import those uh, two things from slick and now actually I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and include each method that I need to include in this class and in the upcoming tutorials I'm gonna fill in and show you guys how to work with each method but now I just want to show you guys the very basics how to create a very simple uh, screen so whenever you're creating a basic screen or basic state what you need to do is you need to have your class inherit from a built-in class called basic game state makes sense right of course so after this the only other thing that we need to do is we need to build let me think I think there's five different methods the first one is the constructor which public menu and this one takes int state which is of course that number which is going to be in this case zero because that's what ID number we uh, assign menu so of course that's the constructor and it's the first method that we need to code whenever we decide to code this the next one is a method that's built into a slick 2d that just helps slick initialize crap that it needs so public and once I start coding this you guys are gonna have a better idea of what's going on but public void init now init takes okay I can't type today game container GC and it also takes state based game object and this is SBG or you actually can name your uh, object anything you want but you know why not make it simple now just like uh, what was it oh in its states list in the game class this one also throws a slick exception so of course we might as well just go ahead and cheat copy and paste and there we go so now we have two methods, the constructor in this init, which basically initializes a bunch of stuff that the class needs. Now, after this, we get to the good, you know, pretty much the good crap, because right now, this is all housekeeping crap, constructors and initializing crap. This method right here, public void render, this is the method that first takes these two parameters, a game container and a state-based game, so we'll throw those in there first now this last um, object that it takes is actually a graphics object and that is usually um, has the variable G and that's kind of like the industry standard so don't name yours anything else because whenever you get a job working for someone drawing graphics in Java they probably want you to name it G and this also throws a slick exception so copy this so why did I say that this is a cool method well this is the method that actually draws stuff on the screen say on our main menu we wanted to I don't know have it say welcome to hand blaster well this is where we're gonna draw that text maybe we wanted to you know draw a picture of a ham blasting another ham this is where we draw that render is basically draw stuff on the screen and our graphics object is basically like a paintbrush where it draws everything that we want it to pretty sweet huh so now we're getting into the good stuff okay I'm kinda of feeling it now this next method is also cool public void update now update takes three parameters game container state based game 
copy paste that crap in there and the last one is int delta and I'll explain that to you guys later on and this throws a slick exception to however you know if you're a cocky programmer and you just think you never make errors you don't even really need exceptions but we probably do okay so I said that update is a cool method to oh I got the hiccup slash burps I hiccup once then I burp once <laughs> Oh man, I amuse myself sometimes. So anyways, what this method is going to be responsible for doing is updating the images on the screen. Why do we need to update them? Well, if we just have plain old images on the screen, then it wouldn't be very exciting. We need that crap to move around, crash into each other, shapes crashing into hams, and, and in order to have animation on our game, then the images actually need to update which causes them to change location which causes them to move around giving it the illusion of animation so that's how that works now this last method is actually a boring one so you see how this was kinda cool this was a little bit cooler this was awesome and this was amazing now you know I kinda built you guys up to bring you back down because all this is gonna do is gonna be really simple public int get id doesn't even take any parameters it's just going to return the ID of this state and remember menu is zero return zero just like that so basically to recap one last time actually before we recap we need to do something else so this is pretty much the shell of a screen the very basics of how you can how you make a screen on your game so of course this is for the main menu go ahead and select all of this copy this and also paste it into your play class. Now of course we can't just paste it and say see it, save it and leave it. We need to change a couple things first. Basically this is how you create a screen for the play class but you need to change the class name which is of course play instead of menu. Therefore we need to change the constructor which is play instead of menu. And the last thing that we need to change is the return value at the end because remember menu was zero but play was one. So that's how you know our game is going to know what one is menu and what one is play. So pretty cool. That is the core basics of how you create a screen. Now to recap, we can finally recap. In order to do that, say we're working, of course, whatever package we're working with, import all the crap that we you know downloaded. Now make sure you extend from a basic game state, which creates a basic computer screen for your game. Now a constructor in our init is going to be where we're doing our housekeeping stuff. The render is going to be responsible for drawing graphics. The update is going to be responsible for updating those or moving them around. And the get ID pretty much returns the ID of that state. Now if we hop back to our main master class, check it out. Oh, no errors whatsoever. So we could go ahead and run this game and it says, okay, Hmm. Very exciting, huh? It says the frames per second, and I, uh, you know, not a lot going on here. So, you know, I don't think I would get up right now and try to sell this for millions of dollars. We probably need to change a couple more things on it, maybe add an image or something. But hey, we have all the time in the world to work on that. We'll do those in the next tutorial. So, anyways, thank you guys so far. And uh, yes, yeah, so remember, please don't forget to add me on Twitter, Google Plus, and uh, I'll see you on the forums. See you.